Do you remember a very disastrous cyclone that hit India? Yes, we are talking about super cyclone that hit Odisha in 1999. It was considered as the most severe cyclone of the 20th century. It took away life of more than 10,000 people and caused damaged worth crores. It was not just one cyclone. In recent years, India has to face many cyclones such as Amphan, Tokti, Fani, etc. and we also had to take various emergency measures to tackle these cyclones. Now the question arises, what exactly are these cyclones? Are all the cyclones destructive? Where and how do they originate? And after all, why do they have such strange names? In today's discussion, we will try to find answers to all these questions. Have you ever wondered what is the origin of the word cyclone? Actually, the word cyclone has come from the Greek word cyclos, which means the coil of a snake. Yes, yes, you heard it absolutely right, the coil of a snake. Actually, if you look at the cyclones, they appear like the coil of a snake. The formation of the cyclone is a complex meteorological phenomena in which the atmospheric pressure plays a very important role. Now what is this atmospheric pressure? Basically, the force or the pressure exerted by the air on the earth's surface is called as atmospheric pressure. When the air in a particular place get warms, it rises vertically, resulting in a shortage of air in that place, creating a low pressure zone. Similarly, in the cold areas when the air is cold, the air sink downward to the surface, resulting in the accumulation of the air. This creates a high pressure zone in the area. Now, let us relate to the cyclone. Basically, a cyclone or what we called as chakravat in Hindi is a storm that moves in a circular motion in the ocean around a low pressure zone. that is a storm that originates from the wind moving in a circular motion around a low pressure zone is called as cyclone now let us understand why does a cyclone has a circular motion cyclone is moving in an inward spiral motion due to coriolis force coriolis force affects the direction of the wind the wind direction because of the coriolis force is anti clockwise in the northern hemisphere and is clockwise in the southern hemisphere around a low pressure zone therefore cyclone appear in the spiral shape now after understanding the shape let us understand that how many cyclone comes in india every year in the indian subcontinent five to six cyclone form and most of them are seen in bay of bengal however due to climate change the formation of cyclone in the arabian sea is also increasing now We also need to understand that globally about 70 to 90 cyclonic systems are generated every year. These cyclones bring heavy rainfall and storms which causes massive destruction in the coastal areas. Now if we talk about the classification of the cyclones, the cyclones are of two types, temperate cyclone and the tropical cyclone. I need to understand what does the term tropical and temperate mean. Friends, to study the earth better some imaginary lines have been created among them 23 and a half degree north and 23 and a half degree south are respectively called as tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn the area between these two lines that is 23 and a half degree north and south is called as tropical zone and if we look beyond these lines towards 60 degree north and 60 degree south those regions are called as temperate zone therefore the cyclone appearing in these zones are named respectively that is the cyclone appearing in the tropical zone is called as tropical cyclone whereas the cyclone appearing in the temperate zone is called as temperate cyclone the difference in these zone is basically of the temperature where the high temperature are found in the tropical zone comparatively low temperature are found in the temperate zone now what is the reason behind the difference in the temperature the reason behind the difference in the temperature is incoming solar radiation from the sun what we called as insolation the tropical cyclone are generated between 30 degree north and south latitude whereas the temperate cyclone are developing in the mid latitude because the tropical cyclone are more heated they are more devastating than the temperate cyclone now let us understand that how does tropical cyclone form the conditions for the formation of tropical cyclone are one 
it's about the sea surface temperature sea surface temperature basically the oceanic surface temperature should be above 27 degree celsius this high temperature causes the water to evaporate the water that is evaporating provides large amount of moisture to air then what happens is that this hot oceanic surface warms the air above and the air which is above start picking the moisture on its way the warm air starts rising as the air rises it condenses now due to latent heat of condensation the air further rises and it warms more therefore the air that is rising is warming further a tropical cyclone is developing on the ocean in between 30 degree north and south where the sun rays are direct and the temperature is more the second condition is coriolis force due to the earth's rotation an imaginary force is generated which we call as coriolis force now what does this coriolis force do this coriolis force develops a circular flow in the air and because of the coriolis force the cyclone appears anti clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere there is almost zero coriolis force at the equator and therefore cyclones are not formed between 5 degree north and south and this zone is called as doldrum the third condition for the cyclone is low pressure area a low pressure area is one where the air temperature is relatively high the air is warm the air is rising and therefore there is low pressure area on the surface now due to the high temperature the air that is moving upward is creating a atmospheric low pressure region this low pressure attracts air from the surrounding atmosphere over the ocean creating a cyclone apart from these three condition the fourth condition is atmospheric instability and it is one of the most important criteria for cyclone now what is atmospheric instability now let us understand the fourth condition that is atmospheric instability the atmospheric instability is an important criteria when the cold air is above and the warm air is below this is the condition of atmospheric instability all these conditions are important for the formation of the cyclone now as we know that the formation of cyclone is a complex process and it takes place in various stages let us understand the various stages the first stage the initial stage of the cyclone starts with the evaporation of the ocean water water is warm the air is warm and the clouds are formed this is the initial stage in the mature stage the intensity of the process increases and warm clouds massive clouds are formed near the tropopause level now the clouds spread horizontally creating a high pressure zone in the upper atmosphere while at the bottom there is a low pressure zone creating an eye in the final stage the cyclone hits the coast which is called as landfall after the landfall the moisture source of the cyclone disappears which causes the cyclone to weaken and it eventually dissipates completely the temperate cyclone originates between 35 degree to 65 degree latitude on both the north and the south pole sides these cyclone move from west to east and are more likely to form during winters unlike tropical cyclone the temperate cyclone forms during the meeting of polar and the tropical air masses the meeting of these air masses form fronts at the front the warm air mass rises and the cold air mass sink creating a low pressure area this low pressure attracts the air from the surrounding atmosphere once we've understood the temperate and the tropical cyclone let's understand the naming of the cyclone apart from the formation and the types of cyclone other major aspect is how the cyclones are named you need to understand that only the tropical cyclone are given names and the temperate cyclones are not named the naming process of the tropical cyclone is inclusive that means the countries that are affected by the cyclone take their turn in naming the cyclones the process is carried under wmo world meteorological organization let's understand through an example in the indian ocean since 2004 eight countries including sri lanka india pakistan maldives named the cyclone occurring in the region the recent tropical cyclone bipper joy was named by bangladesh in different region of the world tropical cyclone are known by different names in caribbean sea and usa they are called hurricanes in china sea they are called as typhoon 
as well as in Japan they are called as typhoons in the northern australia they are called as willy willy we will now have to focus upon cyclone management the cyclone management in india is very very important india has about 7516 km of coastline on the eastern side we have west bengal odisha andhra pradesh and tamil nadu whereas on the western coast the states are from kerala to gujarat 76% of the 7516 km of coastline is considered as cyclone prone which the geographers called as the indian cyclone corridor since cyclone cause heavy damage to human life and infrastructure managing this disaster effectively is a major challenge to reduce the cyclone damage there are both the structural as well as non structural measures the structural measures include cyclone shelter cyclone resistant building the canals the drains and the power lines of communication whereas the non structural measures include the early warning system the cyclone management and awareness as well as disaster risk management these measures have helped in reducing the losses caused by the cyclone thus we conclude today's discussion here see you in the next video jai hind take care